All right, the state championship resting on the line. We're ready for the introduction of the rosters and lineups, and with that, Steve Adams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the coaches and players for tonight's championship game featuring the Panthers of Pinckneyville High School and the Panthers of Pena High School. First, for Pinckneyville, entering this game with a record of 32 wins and two losses, the head coach in his 13th season, Dick Korn. <laughs> Assistant coaches, Gary Glenzy, Wes Schott, and Greg Hale. Korn's record, 178 And now the players. Number four, a 5'10 sophomore, Chris McGranahan. Number 11, a 6'4 senior, Jimmy Bowersax. Number 21, a 5'11 sophomore, Mike Napier. Number 30, a 6'2 junior, Wayne Tedder. Number 31, a 6'1 senior, Nate Chapman. Number 34, a 6'2 junior, Aaron Kellerman. And number 45, a 6'2 junior, Troy Rushing. And now, the starting lineup for Pinckneyville. At one forward, a 6'3 senior, 24, Aaron Eplin. A good solid front liner, 10.3 average on the season. At the other forward, a 6'4 senior, 32, Blake Lindner. Another in the Pinckneyville mold, good rebounder, good scorer. At center, a 6'5 senior, 33, Danny Harris. Impressive reserve is now a starter due to the injury to Bird. At one guard, a 6'3 senior, number 12, Shea Hagel. The blue collar performer, this gets the job done. And at the other guard, a 6'3 senior, 22, Barry Grasowitz. All Stater has scored 71 points in three games in the state tournament. That, of course, includes the super section. The Panthers of Pinckneyville High School. And now, let's meet Pena High School with a record of 27 wins and three losses. First, the head coach in his third season, Charles Strasburger. <laughs> Assistant coaches, Mike Bender, Brad Byers, and Harry Curtis. Strasburger, 66 and 21 at Pena. And now the players. Number 20, a 5'8 junior, Travis Sims. Number 22, a 5'10 sophomore, Todd Holthouse. Number 34, a 6'1 sophomore, Jeff Mysick. Number 42, a 5'11 junior, Jeff Curtis. Number 44, a 5'11 senior, Dave Woolard. Number 50, a 6'4 junior, Greg Coleman. And number 52, a 6'3 sophomore, Dave Eddy. And now the starting lineup. At one forward, a 6'3 senior, number 40, Kevin Mysick. He's a blue collar worker on the paint of all one. Tremendous rebounder. At the other forward, a 6'4 senior, number 30, Tom Funneman. All stater in the tournament. He scored 52 points in three games. At center, a 6'2 senior, number 24, Doug Moss. Doesn't score a lot, but plays a lot of defense. At one guard, a 6'1 senior, number 14, Mark Keaton. Outstanding performer, averaging 16.2. And at the other guard, a 5'11 sophomore, number 12, Gary Tidwell. Tidwell, sensational sophomore, has really made the difference with the distance of point guard this afternoon. The Panthers yes. of Pena High School. And now, the officials for this championship game, Bill Spriggs of Kankakee and Rick Preston of Moments. All right, the stage is set. And one of your network sponsors, this ship way back in 1948. They figure they're due. Oh, Duster Thomas was there, yeah. Duster won it in 48. It's been 40 long years. As far as pain is concerned, they have never won a state championship. And in those glory years, Pinkyville got third place three consecutive years, 51, 52, and 53. And they've had great programs. They're right number one in both wire service polls. Pena right number 13 by AP, number nine by UPI. There's the opening jump, Pinkneyville in possession, and Mr. Hagel has the basketball. Hard I played against that 1953 team. And he's no about the program up close, then, Ed. 
Little zone defense, one three one by the Pena Panthers, the Pinckneyville Panthers with Barry Grasowitz, their all fader on the point. 35 this afternoon, on the way, got it. Three pointer. I believe that's the way they started this afternoon. He likes to open it? up with that three pointer, doesn't he? Little goes. diamond and one right now. Over the timeline comes Pena. Here is Punneman. Punneman makes the save near sideline, but he bombed the ball. Tom Punneman caught up with it. Rick Preston said, you turn it over, son, and the basketball goes back to Pinkney Bell. Nick Corn's Panthers with it as Hagel brings the ball up. Grasowitz will be all over the floor. He'll score inside, outside primarily, but don't be surprised if he's even posted inside. Grasowitz to Linder. Linder baseline. Up. Good move side. by Linder. Linder pokes it in. Five-nothing Pinckneyville. Battle for the state championship. Doug Moss. Moss clears off this time to Tidwell. Jerry Tidwell, the sophomore. The heat and heating on the penetration of the basket won't go. Rebound, Meisig up oh. in. Meisig again. Had 10 points this afternoon. A flock of rebounds taken up right where he left off. Good follow-up shot after getting the offensive board. 5-2 Pinckneyville. One of those players that doesn't get a lot of press, but he sure does do a good job in the ballgame. Hey, Hagel has been on the point. They work it down low. Reverse layup does not go on the rebound. Pulled down by Doug Moss. Taking the shot on the inside was Aaron Eplin. All right, Pena pushes it up. They're down by three at 5-2. Gary Tidwell, the very talented sophomore guard out front against the big needle man-to-man defense as Aaron Eplin, number 24, moves to it. There you see Tidwell holding the ball high and being checked off tough now by Shea Hagel out of the switching man-to-man alignment. Back to uh, Tidwell. He does it. He misses it. Rebound, Doug Moss. Two offensive rebounds for Pinckneyville. You mean for Pena against Pinckneyville? Pena, excuse me. Five-four ball game. That's the way they scored both of their buckets. Here's Grasowitz at long range, three-pointer. He's just a plain scoring machine. Jerry Grasowitz comes down. Thomas can be and drills it. Eight-four Pinckneyville. Mysick on the drive. Mysick looks out to front of him. Nothing there. He finally dishes off to uh, Heaton. Heaton back pedals on the dribble, trying to bob and weave inside. The guards on both of these clubs are great penetrators, particularly painters. Excellent. And they've got an inside game there, too. Whistle stopping play. Let's see what they're going to call. Foul on the Pinckneyville Panthers, I believe. And that's right. The foul will go to Aaron Eplin. First foul of the ball game. There well, that's the Aaron looking a bit puzzled. That's an awful, awful tough call. Coaches don't like that call because the ball's on the floor and they're just going for it. It may have been a foul, though. If it is a foul, it's a good thing he called it. But that ball's loose like that. They hate one of those. Little incidental. Inbounded to Heaton in the right corner. Mark Heaton back out to Gary Tidwell. Tidwell being shadowed by Eppler. The highlight of any high school basketball player's life. Playing at least their high school life. Playing in the state tournament. There's a two-pointer by Tom Funneman. And the super highlight playing for the state championship. And the super, super highlight winning it. That defensive player was right in his face last time. Grasowitz goes in, shot was deflected from behind. Great save on the baseline by a hustling Doug Moss. Good block by Funneman. All right, here is Payne up on the attack as Mark Eaton comes up over the timeline. 8 6 Pinckneyville. And thus far, you're seeing the difference in tempo, although really, uh, Pinckneyville has kind of walked it down too thus far. Going to the baseline and uh, looking for the bucket was Mark Eaton. Second turnover for Payne. Well, back in the Duster Thomas days, Pinckneyville rarely ran with the ball. They slowed it down a great deal. I mean, they really slowed it down. In 1953, the score of our game was 36 to 33. That was the final one. Huh? Yeah. Great game. Here is Eplin. He drills it. Aaron Eplin, just very methodically looking at that zone defense. 1-3-1 one, one for Pena. Pinckneyville shoots over. They lead it by four at 10-6. Heaton bounce pass out to Tom Funneman. Funnelman cross court. Oh, Hagel intercepts, oh, but getting it back is Doug Moss to the glass. He scored. Doug Moss with two quick buckets. Doug is a light scorer, 4.3 average, but uh, well, he's almost at his average already. Very fortunate for Payne at that time. 10 8 ball game. Here's Grasowitz to Linder. Linder on the left wing. Now right back out to All Stater Barry Grasowitz, who draws a crowd. Hagel, Hagel in the paint. He continues to play brilliantly. We have an official timeout. Hagel penetrated and got the bucket, and uh, and your player on the floor. Yeah, Funderman, uh, no, it's uh, Mysick. Kevin Mysick. Like a cut lip. Yeah. They're going to work on Mysick just a little bit. His lip was cut, a little flurry underneath. I didn't see any contact there, but obviously there was some. 
And uh, checking in for him is going to be uh, Greg Pullman. It's one of those injuries where it bleeds a great deal. Not half as serious as it looks. And uh, working on him on the bench. Of course, uh, Charlie Strasberger is coach. You know, coach, you've got to be part-time uh, psychiatrist, psychologist, physician, everything else, don't you? Got to be a little bit of everything. Here's Heaton. The ball is tripped by Grasowitz. Grasowitz, nice move. Nice move there, too. Mary Grasowitz with the steal. 14-8 ball game. Pinckneyville by six. Three turnovers early here. Maybe a fourth one. Uh-oh, no. They're going to say the ball was deflected in the defensive zone by Danny Harris on the press. As it looked like the sophomore kid well have thrown the ball away. But the reason the pass was so Aaron Harris got a hand on it. 3.48 to go in the first quarter. 14-8 Pinckneyville over Payne. Battle for the Class A state championship. Kidwell fires Linder with the intercept from Moss. Down the floor to Harris. Harris goes up it. and rolls off. A great rebound by Mark Eaton on the inside. Eaton pulls it down. Now Gary Kidwell brings the ball across. Kidwell scored 19 this afternoon. That would have been a big one for Pinckneyville. Give him an eight-point lead. Sure would have. Early. Here's Funneman. Funneman circles inside of Linder. A little leaner. Got it. Pretty nice move by Funneman. He got around Linder. That isn't easy. Got around him in the paint. He's got that good lean-in shot. 14-10. Pinckneyville by a couple of buckets. Grasselwitz holding out front. Doesn't hold long. Eplin. Eplin free. The rebound comes off hard to Greg Coleman. Almost knocked Coleman down. Didn't to, he didn't have to jump for it. No. But he had a good position in there. If he jumped, he wouldn't have gotten it. Kedwell looking. Boy, the sophomore's played great basketball there in this tournament. Coleman sure. going to turn around. It won't go. Grabbing the rebound is Danny Harris, who has had a great tournament for the Pinckneyville Panthers. Aaron Eplin comes down, ball swatted away from behind, and Pinckneyville will inbound in the own attacking basket. He really didn't shoot that last shot. He kind of pushed it. Yep. No Indeed, follow through whatsoever. Well, we've got a timeout. Pinckneyville by four, 243 for the quarter. Payton with a defensive mark on the season of 52.1. Pinckneyville, a defensive average of 52.8. Hagel out front, gets the ball to Harris. Harris on the jumper, it won't go. Rebound deflected far side, and the basketball is gonna go right back to uh, Pinckneyville. Kevin Mysick suffered a, a split lip. He said they'll be back in the game. Okay, thanks, Frank. Mysick is such a big factor on the boards for Pena. He would be out for an extended period of time, but really hurt, but he will not be. And you heard on the free game, Kevin Law Bird is out, uh, not playing at all today. Russell on the perimeter, the shot gets in and out, and the rebound is hauled down by uh, Marky. Of course, Pinckneyville is fortunate with the bird injury and the injury to Danny Harris has played so extremely well. From the baseline, Funneman, it won't go. And the rebound hauled down by Grasowitz. Grasowitz brings it up quickly. Right side to Lindner. Lindner, pull up jumper. Blake Lindner gets his second field goal. And he got a 16-10 score. Pinckneyville by half a dozen. Pinckneyville has so many players that can score for you. They certainly shoot very well on the move, and uh, you're almost surprised when they miss one, as well as they have shot in this tournament. Mark Heaton playing man-to-man -man basketball with Hagel, and we got a palming violation. Ball. Another Mark turnover. Ball for walking with the five turnovers now for Pena. You know, there you see Mysick with the lip injury on the bench. Looks like he's about ready to come back in the ball game. He wants in there. Yep, sure of that. 16-10 Pinckneyville with 140 to go in the opening quarter. Shea Hagel bounce pass right side to Lindner. Back to Hagel, out to Grasselwood, top of the circle, well out on the floor. Now they skip pass over the zone defense. Hagel penetrates, dishes to Harris, misses it. Rebound batted up on the board two or three times, deflected out of bounds. Pinckneyville has it back. Harris a little disgusted with himself for not getting that one down. Well, he got two of those tips this afternoon. He's about to miss one pretty soon. And yeah, a lot of defensive pressure inside, too. Grasowitz. Nice pass. These two. Eplin, his shot will not go, and the rebound hauled down by Doug Moss. Cross court now to Gary Tidwell. Tidwell brings it up. Pinckneyville up six. Pena with the basketball. Tidwell circles away from Grasowitz. Off this time to Mark Heaton for the Pena Panthers to Tom Funneman. Funneman low to Pullman. Oh, uh, he got it that time. It just shows you the confidence they had. If Funneman had the ball, he's been scoring real well, but he made that bounce pass in addition inside, and the guy missed one a while ago, then he comes back and gives one. Holman is the full-time starter, but of course, they let you go with three guards in this tournament twice. Uh -oh. Harris Skye trying to rebound Linder's missed shot, and I think they're going to call Harris over the back on the offensive rebound. That's foul number one on Danny Harris. 
Last couple of shots for Pinkenville have been short. Here's the young man checking in, Jimmy Bowersox, who uh, played so well this afternoon. He's 6'4", 170 a senior. Shoots 65% from the field, 73% at the free throw line. Painable inbound. Gary Tidwell, the Heat. A little full court, trapping zone fresh. Being employed now, kind of a 1 2 2 alignment being employed by Pinkneyville. Oh, and they steal. Here's Eppelin. Eppelin to Shea Hagel. Hagel goes in, lays it up with the left uh, hand, missed, missed it. it, but was fouled by Tidwell. Chance for a three pointer there. Pinkneyville is so quick. You know, we're talking about St. Elmo, which just gives you blazing quickness, but look at the, watch the steal here. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. As he stole the ball, he's looking yeah. up the floor. Here's Eppelin. Off this time to Shea Hagel. Hagel at the line, shooting two. Right in the middle of the hoop, the first one. See what kind of free throw shooter Hagel is on the season. Not too shabby, 73%. I think right here early, I think Dick Gorn's trying to show you his pattern here, the saving on coaching this championship game. He's giving a couple of kids a little rest right here. Well, they played the second afternoon ball game, and despite winning convincingly, it was a physical test with Walter Lutheran, no question about that. Oh, Driving all is away. Hayden, he got it in, and he was fouled. Pretty move from one end of the floor to the other. Mark Heaton, who has proven he can play this entire tournament, if there was ever any doubt, which there wasn't, Hagel picks up the personal foul, his first. Ends up with a possible three-pointer. Look at this. Goes inside. Little jump stop. Goes up strong. All the time he shot it, he kept his eyes on the hoop. Kevin Meisig back in the ball game now, and uh, Greg Coleman, who gave him a good effort off the bench, comes out. Coleman 6'4", Meisig is 6'3". Meisig's the young man who suffered the uh, lip injury. At the free throw line, trying to complete the three-pointer. There you see Mark Heaton. Doesn't go. Rebound. Controlled by Meissig. Deflected. Down low with a power move. Funneman. Uh -oh. Up and in. Tom Funneman for Pena. They got that rebound on that, uh, that play that they used on that missed free throw again. 17-16 ball game. Nate Chapman on the floor now for Pinkney. A foul in the center circle. Traveling violation. No foul. They forced the travel with 11 seconds to go in the quarter, and Pena has a chance to take the lead. The Pena Panthers with the basketball. Out of Christian County, the Mid-State Conference, Mark Heaton. Heaton trying to flash around Hagel. Holds it up on the rebound. Funneman's over the back as Chapman grabs the basketball. A real chess match, isn't it, Ed? There was good pressure on that last shot. Yes, it is. Common violation, two seconds to go in the quarter, 17-16, Pinckneyville. Uh -oh. Eppelin, inbound to Linder. Linder guns it. Well, it cleared everything. Cleared the works here in the assembly hall. That's it after one. At the end of the first quarter, Pinckneyville's lead is one over Paynham. And let's pause. To be selected to work the state championship ball game, of course, that's kind of the ultimate in uh, high school officials' career, being assigned to work a state tournament anyway, and then a championship ball game. Two fine arbiters. Pena has the basketball with a chance to take the uh, lead. And right now, Pena holds a 9-3 to three edge on the boards. A sweeping, dominating edge on the backboard. Turnover count 6-1. Pena has the big edge there. So they're winning big at one end and losing big at the other. Front of them, three-pointer. No good. Uh, rebound. Offside rebound again. Coleman, up and in. Greg Coleman got the ball off the offensive glass. He's back in the ball game, obviously. 18-17, Pena's first lead. Pinckneyville's Barry Grasowitz. Bowman pushed the man inside just a little bit. He got the outside shot. Here's Grasowitz, the All-Stater. He got it. Grasowitz may well take charge. 19-18. Pinckneyville by a point. Funneman over to Doug Moss. There's Funneman. That's the sophomore with the basketball right there, Tidwell. He penetrates. Can't get it down, and there's a good solid rebound by uh, Bowersox. Off the defensive iron, Jimmy Bowersox holds it down. Pinkneyville on the attack in the light blue. Grasowitz fires another one. This one misfires. Rebound, loose on the floor. Up with it is Chapman. Chapman to Harris. Harris guns it. Rattles around the iron. Won't go down. On the rebound, people sky, bodies fly, arms flail, and a foul has been called. I believe Grasso missed, missed the guy inside on that last shot that he took. Foul is on the power socks. Had a man open. If he dumps it off, he might have a layup. 19-18. Pinckneyville by one. Just underway in the game's second quarter. Battle for the Class A Illinois State Basketball Championship. 
Third place game tonight was a classic. Walter Lutheran over St. Elmo in overtime, 71 to 62. This may be a classic. May well be. Mark Eaton yeah. slides baseline right, comes back out front. There's Funneman with it. To Pullman. Pullman. You know, just a shade short on the shot, but the uh, ruling seemed to be that Danny Harris knocked it out of bounds. There's a look at the, uh, uh, those are the Pena fans, I believe. Panthers on both sides of the floor. Inbound to Mark Heaton. Mark penetrates right to the hoop. He uh, got it. Nice move by Mark Heaton. Did he take that ball inside or not? Great job. Pena 20, Pinkney Bell 19. So Heaton is two out of three from the field so far in the ball game. Bower Sox at the baseline can't get it down, and the rebound goes to Kevin Meisick. Look who got a rebound. Meisick to Funneman. Funneman being hounded by Grasowitz. Funneman at the baseline to Meisick. Kevin Meisick off the Funneman assist. Pena leads it by three. 22-19 over top-ranked Pinkneyville. Hagel. Jay Hagel lob pass to Barry Grasowitz. Back to Hagel. Ball thing. Slides inside. Pass deflected away. And they got a foul called as uh, Doug Moss intercepted. Then deflected the ball back out front. I think Moss was called for the foul. Nope, wasn't Moss. They gave the foul to Meisick. Kevin Meisick picks up the personal. Be a common violation. Neither team on the bonus as yet. Yeah, Payne is on the bonus. I beg your pardon. Payne Bell is not. It'll be inbounded by uh, Aaron Epple. Out front to Hagel. Dort. Hagel shot will not go. Rebound struggle for Lindner, Meisick, and Funneman all there. Pinkney Bell on the change of possession rule. They still have possession. Very, very tough ball game thus far for the Class A state title. Lindner for Pinkney Bell. They grassle it to Aaron Eplin in the right corner. Eplin lobs back out to Barry Grasselwitz. Grasselwitz left side to Hagel. To Lindner inside, knocked away by Pullman. They're going to call Pullman for the region. First foul on Coleman. Again, a common violation. Let's see, Pena has picked up uh, two, three, four fouls on the next one. Pinkney will go to the line, the one and one. Lob into Hagel. Hagel feeds the baseline. Here's Eplin, and a whistle. Traveling violation, Aaron Eplin. Boy, Pena, Ed is really playing the tough D oh, inside. Playing a good D, and they're hitting the board strong. And they're getting the ball down inside. Yep. The low man. Last time down, Funneman made a great inside bounce pass for the low ten, post man. 10 6, the rebounding edge. Pinkney will close that a little bit. Here's Heaton. Heaton out to Funneman. Funneman, a three point range. Oh, look at here. Tom um, Funneman, and it's 25 to 19, Pena. You yeah. think there's a little excitement behind us? Well, Pena people are uh, making a little bit of noise. Who can blame them? Shea Hagel, straight away. He brought him back. And by them, I mean Pinkneyville. Jay Hagel with the jumper. 25-21. Pena by four. Right Mark. now, Pena's doing everything he wants to on offense. Funneman from the Heaton. Low to Pullman. He comes up a little short. Maybe a foul. Uh -oh. And I think Moss was over the back. He's trying to go to the offensive board and pick up the foul. Maybe two of them on him. I'm not sure. Yeah, Doug Moss picks up the personal foul. And now Pinkneyville is on the bonus. No, only one. So far, no, no one has picked up more than one personal foul. But it's early on. Jimmy Bowersox at the line. One and one for Bowersox at Pinkneyville. 25-21 ball game. Lead to Pena. On the missed free throw, Doug Moss with the board. Moss to Heaton. Heaton skips it up through the center circle. A big block eye here at the Assembly Hall in Champaign. In the paint, baseline Funneman. Funneman airs it on the jumper. Not a very good shot. That Lindner time. holds it too up. quick. Yep. Jay Hagel. Hagel. Change of pace dribble. In the paint. Got it. Well, he's got a soft jump shot, hasn't he? Yep. Seven points for Shea Hagel. Who can do up, it all. Gets up real nice, and it's a soft touch. 25-23 score. Two-point paint a lead. Led by five a moment ago as we approach the four-minute mark in the first half. Here's Mark Heaton. Heaton spins. Won't go. Pretty rebound by Bauer Sox, who really skies for it. On the outlet pass, the ball is kicked away by Funneman. Pinkneyville retains possession. Now they have a chance to tie. As Gary Tidwell comes in for Tom Funneman for Pena. Charlie's going to do the same thing that Dick was doing a little while ago. Give him a little breather here now and then. 
A long game there. Two fine coaches. Charlie Strasburger at Pena, Dick Bourne of Pickneyville going out of Hammer and Tongs. There you see Charlie Strasburger and Tom Poneman what I think we could describe as a very earnest discussion. <laughs> Over on the Pena bench. I think he was listening. Yep, I'm sure he was. 25-23 Pena, our score, 352 for the half and a sizzler for the state championship. Lindner, right side, Grasowitz out front. Outer iron, no good. Terry Grasowitz with the rebound. Back to the baseline. Looks for help. Gets the ball to Shea Hagel. Hagel drifts it to Lindner. Lindner can't shoot. Fell off by Pullman at the baseline. To Hagel, to Grasowitz. Grasowitz back to Hagel. Bad pass, but Hagel retrieves at the sideline. Clears it. To Eflin, to Lindner. Lindner. He can't get it to stick, and Pullman grabs the rebound. Greg Pullman. Could have got, gotten a position to shoot a bank shot there. Yeah, Pinkneyville was white hot this afternoon. They're chilly here tonight. Hard to shoot that shot and that jumper that close sometimes. There's the bank. There's the man-to-man -man matchup as far as uh, Pinkneyville's concerned. Hagel on heat. Out front is Tidwell. Grasowitz is on Tidwell. Back to heat. Look at him battling inside. Breaking out for the pass now is Moss. Back to Tidwell. Isaac being pushed by Bauer. Socks from behind. Heat penetrate. No basket, foul. Offensive foul, Mark Heaton. Take a look at that one again, Ed. Good call. Yep, excellent call. Pena fans didn't like it, but on the replay, there's little doubt. But I want to comment again. After that ball left Heaton's hands, he kept his eye constantly on that rim. Yep. And we got a timeout. 25-23, Pena, 2.52 for the half, and one of your network sponsors is Country Company. Bauer Sachs goes inside, passes deflected away, almost intercepted. Pena still in the zone, looks like a 2-3 now. Out front, Grasowitz. Grasowitz's shot does not go, and Mark Heaton has the board. Barry Grasowitz does not have a hot hand this evening. No, he doesn't. This afternoon, he scored 35 points and couldn't miss. He's been a little bit short with his shots. Sophomore, Kidwell, three-pointer. It doesn't go. And Grasowitz grabs rebound, the rebound, no. right? Grasowitz brings it down quickly. Collision, Hagel cut off, foul. And the foul will go to uh, Mark Eaton. See if I can check on Grasowitz uh, shooting from the field so far. Taking nine shots and connected on four. So he's still shooting pretty well. Four of nine, and two of them have been three-pointers. Not bad from what you've seen earlier this <laughs> last couple of games. You expect a little bit more. Tough to do, though. Hagel with the line. Yeah, he's had a pretty good shooting performance, really. Jay Hagel nails his second free throw. He's two out of three at the line. Eight points for Hagel. 25-24. He can tie it for the Pinkneyville Panthers. There's a deep breath. Good look at Shea Hagel. And he pours in the free throw. We're even, Steven, 25 apiece. State championship is the prize. 2-10 to go in the half. Pinwell to Funneman. Skip pass over what is now a Pinkneyville's own defense. 2-3, first Looks time like we've seen three, that. Yes. Yep. They can change up, too. Eaton to Tidwell. Tries a three-pointer. Can't get it. Lindner with the board. Pinkneyville with a chance to take the lead. To regain it, they held the lead in the early going. Jay Hagel dribbles behind his back pass to Grasowitz. Oh, great save by Barry Grasowitz at the timeline. He prevented the over and back, but not by much. Aaron Eplin oh. to Hagel. Hagel looked for Linder. Linder was expecting Hagel to go up with the jump shot. That's the right idea. The pass was just a little bit behind him. Third turnover for Pinkney, though. They just don't throw it away very often. That was excellent team play, though. Yep. Well, you know they'll come back with that later in the ball game. But I think I probably would have expected Hagel to shoot it, too. He was in pretty close. Here's Tidwell to Funneman. Funneman right back to Gary Tidwell. Tidwell off to Heaton. They look into Pullman. Pullman has Linder behind him. Out front to number 12. That's Tidwell. Left wing. This is Mark Heaton with the basketball. Back to Tidwell. Right side to Tom Funneman. Skip pass over the zone to Heaton in the corner with 1.10 to go in the half. They're making that Picky Bell defense work. They sure are. Throwing that skip pass. Got to cover a lot of territory on that. Mysick is down to the baseline, number 40. All right, the feed now in the left corner to Funneman. Three-pointer. Second three-pointer tossed in by Funneman. 
12 points for Tom in the first half. 28-25, Payne. Now these two teams ready to play, you bet. 28-25, Pinckneyville, Grasowitz down. Cross court, gives the ball to Aaron Eplin. Eplin back to Grasowitz, oh, but not quite. Misick. Misick comes up with the interception. 35 seconds for the half. One shot. Charlie Strasburger says, okay, let's run her down. We'll play for one. 28-25, Pena. All the chips on the line. This is the final game of the Class A basketball season. Butterman near the timeline. To Gary Tidwell. Tidwell, the sophomore, circles out with 14 seconds showing. To Mark Heaton, back to Tidwell. Nifty backcourt combo. Uh, and a lot of pressure. Tidwell threw it. Errantly, Funneman couldn't make the reception. Seven turnovers for Pena. Pinkneyville could tie it with a three-pointer. Eight seconds to go in the half. They're going to make him work for it. Grasowitz. Oh, look out. Right. Ball hits Grasowitz in the head. Funneman's going to go down the lane. Pulls it up and got it. Uh, and that's it at halftime. Pena with a five-point lead. And how the quirks of a basketball game can suddenly change the complexion of things. Look at those Pena fans. After Peyton Miller rallied to tie it, they're now down five, 30-25 at half, and one of your network. Well, neither club is back out on the floor, Ed, and that's usually a lead pipe sense that there's a lot of talk in that locker room. There's something going on in there. There you see the crowd, and uh, now you see us. <laughs> they were better off with the crowd, well, weren't they? maybe so. <laughs> What's going to happen in the second half? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I think... Uh, Payne has established a tempo, and if they can come out here and uh, do the same thing in the second half, I'll tell you what, it's going to be pretty tough for Pinkneyville. They've been pushed outside, and their shots have been coming a little bit short, and Payne has been able to take care of all the rebounds. And Mr. Funneman has made himself known the last two minutes of the first half. What was the philosophy in going back to the zone defense on the part of uh, Pinkneyville, in your opinion? Better rebounding position? Well, it, it may have been right there, and... Uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe they were getting tired. Maybe they felt that they could, could stop a little bit. You know, they were in man-to-man, -man, and then Pena went down inside about two or three times yep. and got some inside buckets. And then Heaton was taking the ball down inside on the dribble, and uh, I think that maybe he thought that he could stop that inside game and maybe push him outside a little bit. I don't know. Now we're in a situation type of thing, aren't we? Yes, They're going to have to react to situations continually throughout the second half. Uh, if, if, just like I said, if Pena can come out and maintain it, it's going to be a very, very exciting ball game all the way. Pena has the upper hand right now, and they are having everything going the way they want it to go. All right, let's pause for these messages. Take a look at those shooting stats. Pinckneyville white hot this afternoon. 10 of 27 right now from the field, 37%. They are two of three from three-point range. Pena is an even 50% shooting club from the field on 14 of 28. They also are two of three of three-point range. Free throw is not a big factor. Pinckneyville the edge there. Rebounding, Pena by two, 13-11. Turnovers about even, 7-4. So that's your halftime statistical story. For Pena, leading the way is Tom Funneman with 16. For Pinckneyville, Mary Grasowitz has 10, and Hagel has 9. Ready for the second half shortly. One of your network sponsors, Illinois Pork Producers. Call Radio Row, radio stations from one end of the state to the other, covering the state tournament here in the assembly hall. And Painter, with a five-point lead, has the basketball to start the second half. They have an excellent chance to put some real pressure on right now in this position. Now they say in the third period, early stage is vitally important in any basketball game. Gary Tidwell out front. Tidwell looks off. A little uh, patience being displayed by Painter. The tempo has been pretty much to their liking so far. He's got Pinkneyville spread. Here's Heaton inside. Oh, he drew, drew that foul, didn't he? Oh, he sure did. Heaton's just played very heady basketball the entire tournament down here. Shea Hagel picks up his second foul. And at the line will go Mark Heaton. Shooting a pair. Tell you what, they haven't had a lot of press all year, but they sure have impressed a lot of people down there. Pena ranked number 13 by AP, number 9 by UPI coming in. And Mark Heaton has this nailed a pair. 32-25, biggest lead either club has enjoyed. Pena by 7. 
Shea Hagel up for Pinckneyville. The crowd really, Pinckneyville fans on their feet, trying to rally their ball club. Linder, lane violation. Somebody camped in there too long, and I think it was Danny Harris. Pinckneyville is going to come a little full court pressure here. Remember, Pinckneyville for the second game in a row going without Kevin Bird, who was sidelined with a knee injury. Their starting center, but Harris has played very well in his stead. Tonight's the kind of night you want all your personnel, of course. Long jumper, three-pointer, Tidwell. Doesn't go. Nice, solid rebound to Flick Linder. Linder to Shea Hagel. Here's Shea down. Oh, nice On the pass. base to Harris. Can't oh, get in the stick. Rebound pulled down by the backboard that time. Nope. Got to use it up there. That's what it's for. That's a difficult shot when you're going in with nothing but iron. Funneman shot block. is partially blocked. Stolen by Hagel. Hagel out to Aaron Eplin. Eplin brings it down for the Pinckneyville Panthers. He looks off baseline. Lindner Dork. long push is no good. Rebound taken away by Harris oh, out of bounds, play. and it's going to go back to Pinckneyville. Good defense, Funneman. No, oh, goes the other way. Uh -oh. The ball goes to Painter. 32 to 25. Pena leading by seven. Pinckneyville uh, not really trapping real tough as yet, are they? Thank Martin. They're not really trapping real oh, tough. No, not real hard. Just talking press, but. Trying to force that passing error, and they do. Ball was deflected Might be away. 10 second, Ten second yeah. violation. So Pinckneyville got the job done, and now checking back in is Greg Coleman. They're getting the ball back. Do you see Harris trying to get the crowd excited? Yep. Trying to get the. Look over the crowd and raise his hands, trying to get him up and holler for him. Behind us, the Pinckneyville cheerleaders are working pretty hard, trying to do the same thing. And Pena has been roaring ever since they walked in the assembly hall. Right side, Epplin to Hagel. Here's Grasowitz. Grasowitz tries to penetrate, cut off. Out to Linder. Linder to Hagel. Uh, Hagel is tripped up. He's going to call a foul, I believe, on Meissig. Yep. Foul number two on Kevin Meissig. Inadvertent thing. I think he only had seven fouls the first half. Pinckneyville only had two. Yep. All right, Pinckneyville inbounds. Oh, nice pass. Nice in there with the bucket. What was our halftime score? I didn't jot that down. You're, I think halftime 30 25. 30 25. Okay. Thank you. Frank's still alert. <laughs> It better be. 32 <laughs> 27, the score remains, and here's well, the collision. Charge. charge on Heaton. Third foul on him, too. That's a Mark big foul. down. Yep. 6 0 2 in the third quarter. Mark Heaton picks up foul number three. Right in front of our broadcasting position, the basketball goes over to Pinckneyville, and Charlie Strasburger wants a timeout. Timeout, Pena. Pena still leads it. 32-27, and one of your network sponsors is Country Company. Take me, though, crowd. Mark Heaton with three fouls. Tough coaching decision for Charlie Strasburger, but he's leaving him in. Wrestle it from the side. Can't get it to drop. Off the floor, the rebound goes to Kevin Meising. The paint is still playing that good 1-3-1 one, one defense. And they played it extremely well. They really pushed him out. Here's Heaton. Heaton off to Doug Moss. Moss had it, lost it, knocked away. Oh, on Moss. And how are they going to call this one? Moss, Doug Moss picks it up. And you can hear a collective holding of the breath on the part of the Painter fans because Heaton was close enough to it that uh, he would have been suspect, but they called it on Doug Moss. Off to Linder for Pinckneyville. Hagel to Eplin. Eplin penetrates. Off balance. Leans the shot up there on the leaner. Was fouled. Didn't get her down, but drew the foul. And the whistle goes to Funneman. Two fouls on Tom Funneman. That may have been the fourth foul on uh, Pena this half. If it is, they're in that one on one off early. That one nails the free throw. It's a two shot foul here. 32 to 28. Pinkneyville scored three points in the third quarter. Two scored by Pena. Second throw, Epple. Around the hoop. Southern Illinois against, oh, uh, South against the South Central Illinois. There's uh, Heaton almost walked with it. Ed Butkovich talking to himself there momentarily, and you too. Boss's jumper up off Holman with a power rebound, and he was fouled by Grasowitz. Holman went back to the board pretty tough. First foul on Barry Grasowitz, yes, who doesn't foul very often. 
at the line will go Greg Bowman. Let's see what kind of free throw shooter Bowman is. Not the best. 587 at the line. But he's a good rebounder. He's always near the basket. Not a very good defender. And right now, pretty fair country free throw shooter. There you see Dick Korn. And his assistant was also the athletic director at uh, Lakeville High School. See the side by side. Moss leaves. Tidwell comes back in. So you're seeing now uh, Tidwell along with Heaton and a front line of Funneman, Coleman, and Meiser. Second throw. Greg Coleman nets a pair. 34 to 29. Still a five point in a lead. 5-14 to go, chapter three. Left corner, Grasowitz in the paint. That was pretty play by Barry Grasowitz. I think that was Linder. Oh, was that like, yeah, yeah you're I right. Pardon, pardon me, it was Linder. Oh, oh close. Hey, Grasowitz on the line there. All right, here is the Tidwell. Tidwell brings it up. Right side, glad to have you with me, Ed. Long jumper, Heaton, uh, three pointer. Mark Heaton. 37 to 31, paint up by six. Aaron Eplin, ball deflected to Harris. He put it on. Danny Harris, 37 33, paint a lead, cut to four. Thank you. Fans' defense has picked up the tempo here. I think it's caused the game to get a little bit quicker now, Pace. Tidwell, the Heat. Take me, though, straight up man to man at the moment. A little man to man and throw. Oh, good court. move. Funneman inside. Funneman lost the basketball. Eppelin knocks it away. That's it down the floor to Hagel for the layup. Oh. Jay Hagel and Payne's lead is down to two at 37 35. With 4 05 to go in the third quarter. Keep oh, looking. That's what is sent to Mike Grasowitz. Hagel, chance to tie. Oh, Harris. Harris doesn't get it. Tipped by Harris. Oh. We got a whistle. How are they going to call it? Harris should have cut the ball, come down, and then powered back up with it. He got too far into the basket. Foul has been whistled against Coleman. Well, you're going to see a little bit of thievery out here right now. Want to travel before he threw that ball away. Strasser went to the steal. Aren't they called the foul on Kevin Meisick? And that's his third. Okay, Meisick instead of Coleman. And the free throw by Harris does not go down. Isaac with three. Holman still only has the one personal. One more throw now to Danny Harris. 37-35, Payne. 37-36. Payne's Panthers by one over Pinkneyville Panthers. Oh, that interception. That's working. Hagel with the steal. Harris to Eplin to the glass. Oh, Eplin. Rebound oh, pulled yeah. out of there by the sophomore. Great effort, though. Yep, Gary Tidwell got it away from Aaron Eplin. Yeah. But Pinckneyville has momentum now with 340 to go in the third quarter. They're down one. That basket would have really given momentum off. Mark Eaton changing direction on Hagel. That's Tom Funneman out, well out on the floor. Funneman lobs. They go inside to Meisick. He is hooked and fouled by Shea Hagel. Two of the youngsters who have put on about as hard-nosed a performance, to use a football term, as you can possibly imagine today. Hagel and Meisick got tangled up that time inside. A common violation. Pena will inbound it out of the bonus. Into Meisig. Meisig pushed to the glass. Oh, Got it. Oh, out of the play. Foul by Eplin. How did they get the ball in there, Tony? Everybody's looking around, a little confused. All of a sudden, it goes inside. No, no, you tell me. You're the coach. Well, let's look at it again. He <laughs> just made a great move after getting the kind of a, a little bit of a lead pass. Eplin out. Power Sox comes in. Nate Chapman in the ball game. Harris out. For Pinckney, though. 39 36. Kevin Meisick at the line for a paint ball club. It has to be an underdog in the ball game. They're playing the number one ranked team. Free throw by Kevin Meisick. That doesn't mean a lot with the state they, championship they mean, on the line, though. Everybody else may be the only one to believe it. I don't think they do. Jay Hagel, right side to Chapman. Low to oh, Hagel. Nice blocked inside, though. Big play by Pullman from behind. Pullman did. Got Pullman blocked on. it. Yep. Here's Gary Tidwell, 3-11 to go in the quarter. To Funneman. Off to Tidwell, they look to Pullman. Pullman says, I'll take it in here, but they say no. Pretty good battle in the middle. You can see Bowersox, number 11, defending. He's defending against Pullman. Watch Meisick at the baseline, number 40. Lower left-hand portion of your screen. 
Coleman comes back out with the pass to Funneman. He's going to get the three-pointer. Didn't get it. Rebound. Shea Hagel off the floor. Four-point paint on lead. Pinckneyville pushes it. Hagel feeds low to Bauer. Oh, nice pass. Pretty play. Great pass by Shea Hagel. 40-38. Paint up by a pair. Gary Tidwell across for the paint of Panthers in that white home uniform. Crimson orange and blue. Funneman World. Lean shoots and got it. From Funneman. He's had a great game, honey. 16 for Funneman. 42 to 38 paint. 2 3 defense this time. Linder to Hagel. Hagel number 12. Skip pass over the 2 3 zone to Chapman. Nathan Chapman goes low. The Bauer Sox back to Chapman. They have Hagel free at about 14, and he got her down. 13 points for Shea Hagel. 42 40. Third quarter. Third quarter has been a little exciting, hasn't it? Indeed, it has. You think this is good? What about the fourth? Huh? Uh -oh. Gary Tidwell, 42 40. Pena. Chapman moves on him tough. Might be, Chapman. might be. Oh. They got it off to Lysak. Almost a five second. They were count. looking for it, weren't they? All right, here's Mark Heaton changing directions. Uh -oh. Thunders to the baseline, oh. blocking foul. Oh, there's a big call. Big, big call. Linder picks up the personal foul because had that been called the other way, you're looking at foul number four on Mark Heaton. Well, I think I think Linder might have been moving. It was a just like any other charge block, you know. It depends on how you see it, I guess. Two shots for Mark Heaton. Heaton on the season, fires free throws up there at uh, a 6.92 clip. Isaac goes out, back in the ball game, Doug Moss. Now Aaron Upland's coming back in for Pinckneyville and Danny Harris back in for Pinckneyville as well. They're gonna give Barry Grasselwitz a little rest, also give Linder a little rest, they've gone the distance. 43 to 40. You got one shot, one, six, one, three, one more throw coming here to Mark Eaton. In and out. Rebound. Harris. Harris off to Hagel. Three-point pain a lead. Hagel down. Well out on the floor. We're in the third quarter. Nathan Chapman. Cross court to Eflin. Good pass. Harris all alone. Eflin hit him. Pretty pass by Aaron Eflin. 43-42 pain. Foul on Eplin against Heaton. That's three on Aaron Eplin. Take a look at this foul column. Shea Hagel has three. Aaron Eplin three for Pinckneyville. For Pena, Kevin Misick has three. Mark Heaton riding with three. Foul column in a battle as intent as this one frequently is a big factor. And up the line goes Mark Heaton. Three out of five up there for the evening. And on the rebound, Moss called for his third personal foul. And we've arrayed to the opposite end. 107 to go in the third quarter. 43-42. Pena by a point. They could be behind after this one and one for Jimmy Bowersox. Bowersox shoots free throws at a 73% clip. Now Mysick comes back in the ball game. Kevin Mysick replacing Doug Moss. They're both tackled with three fouls. Power Sox will go for the tie and then the lead. If he makes that first one. The one and one. It doesn't go. It. Chapman oh, with the board. Chapman almost it didn't it. go either, but he was fouled. See how Bill Spriggs called it? And the foul is out on Mysick. Yep. yep. That's number four on Kevin Mysick. So immediately off with the warm up jacket. Back on the floor for Doug Moss. Tough break. Early Grossberger does not look real happy at the moment. You can't blame him. Nathan Chapman in a one and one, or is that a two shot violation? Two shots, I think. He got the 43-43 with a minute and six seconds to go in the third quarter. Pinkneyville and Pena locked up in a Donnybrook for the state championship. 
to play the lead. Reserve, Nathan Chapman has just given Pinckneyville the lead at 1, at 44 43. And Chapman is fouled. Well, Nathan may have given, giveth, and taketh away. Yeah. Because here we go down the other end. Ball game has become a free throw shooting time just over about the last two minutes. Prior to this time, we had very little of this. First half was relatively free of fouls, and our second half has just turned around. 44 43. Pena was into the 101 within two minutes and 30 seconds of the third quarter. Danny Harris leaves. Lindner comes back in the ball game. And Mark Eaton steps to the line where he's missed his last two. Missed his last three. Funnel with a great oh, yeah. rebound. Fell to the floor, and Bowersax came up with a steal with a minute to go in the third quarter. Take me though with a one point lead. Shea Hagel off front. Off Aaron Eplin. Big Corns forces will play for that good shot now at the end of the uh, quarter. They lead it by one. It's been an uphill battle. They were down as much as seven. And now uh, Charlie Strasburger wants his painter club to come out after him. Pull out of that defense. They were back in kind of a one-two-two zone. And now they're uh, virtually matching man to man. Eflin palmed it. Aaron Eflin. I don't know about that call. It was a high dribble more than a palm. There you see Charlie Strasburger. The coach at Pena. There you see Dick Horn saying, hey, what did you, what'd you call? Okay. <laughs> Bringing the ball up. Harry Tidwell. Tidwell off to Funneman. We're down to 19 seconds. Pena trying to get a bucket and regain the lead. They're down 1 at 44 43. Well, out on the floor is Mark Eaton. Eaton on the right handed dribble. Goes to the right side. Circles back. Looks off to Tidwell with oh. five seconds. He's going to launch a three pointer. It's in and out. One second to go. Grazlewitz back in the ball game. If anybody can do it. High on the board. No good. A one pointer after three. After three periods of play, Pinckneyville 44, Pena 43. There you see the Pinckneyville fans. And one of your network sponsors is Case IH. There's your turnover count as we go to the fourth quarter. A Pena with 11 miscues. Pinckneyville with seven. So far for Pinckneyville, 13 from Shea Hagel. He's leading the way, 10 from Barry Grasowitz. For Pena, Tom Funneman has 16, 10 from Mark Eaton. All right, here's Pinckneyville with the basketball, Shea Hagel. Right corner to Aaron Eppelin, back to Barry Grasowitz. Grasowitz out front, extended 1-3-1 it appears now from Pena. Jumper, Bauer Sox, no good, great rebound. Heaton. Heaton pulls it out on the defensive iron. Rebounds now are 20-20, dead even on the boards. Tidwell to Funneman. Three-pointer on the way. Won't go. Rebound. Scramble. Making the save in the corner is a Hagel. Say Hagel. This hustle for the basketball. He clears it to Lender. Here's Blake Lender. Yeah, man up the floor. On the Bauer Sox. Bauer Sox out front to Eplin. Eplin at the free throw line. Sails to the left. Fires it. Got the confidence, Henning. Yes, he sure does. Six points for Aaron Linder, and it's 46-43. Pinckneyville leads it by three. Tom Funneman to Tidwell. Off this time to Doug Moss. Moss gets the ball to Funneman. Funneman in hard to the hoop. Uh, up and in. Uh -oh. Ball dropped. I didn't think it had a chance. You saw it. It carried him high on the glass and Soft fell through. Cut, so. <laughs> 46 45. Big bucket for Funneman. Big bucket for Pinckneyville. Pinckneyville with a one point lead just underway in the final stanza. Eplin. Rebound. Grasowitz. Oh, look at no that good. Effort. Look at on that the effort, board. Though. Moss has picked up foul number four. Doug Moss climbing in the act of trying to get to the offensive board. Four fouls on Doug Moss. And this will put Jimmy Bauer Sox at the line. Bauer Sox, we should say. He missed his two previous throws. 46-45. Pinckneyville by one. Classic championship ball game. Bauer Sox converts. All right, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> How about Dick Horn and Charlie Strasburger? Now, you've been in this situation in this building a few times. 47 45, Pinckneyville. Second one won't go. Rebound. Pulled up. Oh, Coleman nice walked with Eppelin. Eppelin rolls it up. Oh, tip, tip no by, good. Uh, tip by Linder. Did not Eight go. And four. on the rebound, they're going to call the foul on Heaton. Foul is on Mark Heaton. Boy, there is a big call. Foul number four on Mark Heaton. So Heaton has four. 
Doug Moss is riding with four. I'm not and sure. Kevin Meisick has four. I'm not sure in that situation, Charlie wouldn't have been a better off, or maybe they'd have got that bucket. Instead of picking up that four foul on that one. That will hit the free throw for Pinkneyville. Now, Pinkneyville now has Pena in desperate foul trouble, 48-45. They may have that four-point lead after all and still have that four foul on there. The three boys with four fouls. Second throw as Aaron Eflin comes through with two big ones at the line. Pinkneyville still in the pressure game defensively. All right, here's Gary Tidwell, the sophomore, the youngster here in the assembly hall before a roaring crowd. Over to Tom Funneman. Funneman drifts it. The All-Stater can't get the shot to stick. Rebound. Out of heavy traffic. Moss battles for it, and he's fouled by Bowersox. Right now, we're seeing the little bit of difference in the bench from Pinckneyville. And Bowersox says me. Yeah. <laughs> but Bowersox has come in with a good pinch hit effort. Nathan Chapman came off the bench and helped him. And, of course, they were able to start Danny Harris for the injured Kevin Bird. So the depth factor helping just a shade at the moment. Doug Moss at the line. It's one and one. One and one. Long. And the rebound. Power Sox for the 49-45 Pinckneyville by four. Rasselwitz to Lindner. Out front to Hagel. Left side to Aaron Eplin. They go Bob, back door. Bob. And Rasselwitz got it. Rasselwitz got it. 12 points for Grasselwitz. 51-45. Six point Pinckneyville lead. Holman, heavy traffic. Off oh, the glass nice man. shot, Coleman. Coleman did a good job. Moss made a great pass, too. Oh, he really did. You see, when he went down the floor, Coleman let him know. They give him a finger right there. They shook it at him. It's a good pass. Now, Coleman is Coleman is in each other. He's going to have to score for them. Grasselwitz shot it stuffed on him. Barry went high on the baseline. Yeah. And, uh, well, four fouls or no, I believe was Heaton got over and swatted that ball away. Well, no, Funneman, Funneman got the swat, but Grasowitz was trying to take it inside to Heaton to get that fifth foul. Here's Grasowitz, baseline right. Drop Hagel. it down. Eplin. Eplin's had the hot hand. Deflected to Bauer Sox. He can't get it. Rebound. Oh, Eplin foul. foul. And this one is going to be on Coleman. Well, he can afford it. That's his second. The last minute, the Boers have been a big factor here for Pinkneyville. Yep. They started to hit him. Real hard. Charlie Strasburger wants a timeout. Timeout for the Pena Panthers. We're down to 5:30. And one of your network sponsors is American Dairy Association of Illinois. Good ball game. Nice looking like girl. Yeah, indeed. 51-47 Pinkneyville. 5:30. Left to go. Somebody. Having a good time, it would appear. Everybody here is having a good time right now. Aaron Eplin at the line. All right. Except for the two coaches, maybe. <laughs> Eplin awarded a pair for Pinckneyville. Boy, as he comes through. He has dropped in four in a row down the stretch. Five out of five at the line. Eplin on the season is an 80% free throw shooter. Never fails. You mention it, and the ball won't drop. Here's Heaton. Mark nice Heaton throws down for again. Pena. Got it. Mark the, Heaton is a cut. In the first half, he went coast to coast on a missed free throw. Got a three-point effort out of it. Here he goes coast to coast, gets two. That was a bucket and a man. Pena had to have. Indeed it is. Pena's come out. Sticking with the man. Sticking the man to man right at Pinkneyville. Hagel on the perimeter. Oh. Off the floor. Loose ball to scramble. Tidwell dives. Still a loose ball. Rolls out of bounds. Coleman had it. Couldn't find the handle. I remember a play like that years ago that went under a guy's feet, win his legs. Do you remember that game? Dennis of Douglas Quincy? of Quincy. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I do recall that. There's but, Power Sox call for the uh, traveling violation. Pena has it. But there was a little less time in the game. <laughs> I had a chance to visit with Bill Warden the other night, the former coach of Chicago Morgan Park, who won on a last second shot here in the assembly hall. State title, Levi Cobb and company, Larry Smith. Did you see the, the play that the Pidwell made? Yep. Not Danny bouncing off the inbound of the Heat. Yeah. Double team, the pressure really on. Mark Heaton drives it up against Aaron Epple. Oh, look, look at, at that move. Look at Heaton move. Heaton shot. Runs Great around play. on oh. the rebound. We're going to call Pullman over the back of Aaron Epple. Boy, has Epple suddenly come alive, huh? Heaton's been alive. 
Yep, Aaron Eplin suddenly says, hey, we're going to win the state championship if I can get the job done. There's a dribble move by Heaton, I think, coming up here. All right. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Dribble between the legs to begin with. Never lost try, did he? Eplin at the line. Back to live action, and he got it home. Eplin, who is shooting better than 80% at the stripe, is 7 of 7 with all the pressure in the world on his young shoulders. 53-49. There's another one. Nothing but the bottom of the net. 54 to 49. Five point lead to Pinckneyville. And Pinckneyville's pressure has been effective. Tom Funneman across with 440 to play for Pena. Pena trying to battle back. Funneman leans in. Got it. Uh -oh. Tom Funneman with 20 in this title test. 54 51. Pinckneyville's lead down to three once again. Shea Hagel, dog. We still have 427 to play. Hagel across with Pidwell on him. He looks to Linder. Back to Hagel. Hagel back to Linder. Linder moves in. His shot right. Oh, he got a roll. Two. Great pass there by Hagel, though. Linder gets his 10th point as it rattled home. 56-51. Make Neville back to the five-point lead. Tidwell. The sophomore guard pulls it up. Short. Rebound comes off to Eplin, and Pinkneyville has it. His pain is forcing things a bit offensively now. I don't think Charlie wanted that shot right there. Barry Grasowitz signals what he wants his ball club to do against the pain of man to man. Watch a special play coming up here in just a minute. There's Linder. Linder off to Hagel. Hagel to the base. His shot misfires, but there was a reason for it. He was clobbered as he went in. Foul is on Greg Coleman, his fourth. There you see it. Had Isaac back in the ball game for a Pullman. Everybody's got four fouls practically. Had he not have slid his body there when he took that shot, he might have got called for charges. Pullman didn't have bad defensive position. Shea Hagel's at the line. 56 51, take me, Bill. 339 to play. First free throw, the Pinkneyville's missed in a long time. Meisick is playing with four fouls. Doug Moss is playing with four. Pullman has four, but he's out of there right now. Mark Heaton is playing with four. 3.39 left in the ballgame. Hagel gets down one out of two, 57-51. Six-point margin being held by Pinkneyville over Pena. The Pena Panthers with the basketball as Mark Heaton working in the backcourt on Shea Hagel. Boy, Hagel sticking with him. Good defensive position. We're playing straight up man to man basketball now, friends. With well, this thing resting on the line, both clubs are going with tough man to man defenses. Keaton out front has Funneman behind him. Gives the ball to Funneman. Kicks the ball Take to the sophomore three Tidwell. Point. His three oh, point ever, no good. Meisick with the board. Oh, good he board turns by against Bower Sox. No shot there to Funneman. Funneman got uh -oh. it. Two pointer by Tom Funneman. 57-54, Pinckneyville lead is narrowed to three, and you see the clock. Big rebound by Meisick, weak side. He pushed his man inside, then having bounced out. Three minutes left. Grasowitz to Hagel on the baseline. Back to Allstate, or Barry Grasowitz out front. Funneman is on it. They want a good shot now. They go right side to Eplin. Eplin being shadowed by Meisick. Here is Eplin moving inside, back to Grasowitz. 243 and counting. Funneman reach in. Grasowitz, shot will not go. Rebound to Eplin. Eplin slides uh -oh. the baseline. We got a lane oh, violation. No. Pinkneyville had somebody in there too long. The shot was just taken. Well, it becomes a turnover. The basketball goes to Pena. 57 to 54. Three point lead to Pinkneyville. Mark Heaton with the basketball to Tidwell. Tidwell slides, goes down the lane, bounce pass, off to Moss, oh, to Meisick, Meisick foul by yeah. Grasowitz underneath. Foul number two on Barry Grasowitz. 57-54 with 2.24 to play. Oh, see the foul. There's Meisick, no question about it. Kevin Meisick at the line where he's one out of one tonight. Push it. Now the best he can do now is pull Pena within two. Take Neville 57, Pena 54. Watch 10 it. points, 13 rebounds in the semifinals. Watch the inside rebound and Pena if he misses. 
He gets it down and now checking back in for Pinckneyville. Center Danny Harris leaving Jimmy Bowersack to give him a great effort. A three pointer by Funneman a minute ago was a big one. Okay, the inbounds pass to Linder. Blake Linder controls, clears to Grasowitz. Two point lead to Pinckneyville. Here's Harris to Grasowitz as they back it off just the shade. Well out on the floor, number 24 with the ball is Aaron Eflin to Hagel. Back to Linder. 57-55. Eflin. Short. Rebound. Marky. Eaton. Mark Kimball, Frank Vassoni, Ed Butkovich with you, along with Jim Albrecht from the Assembly Hall. Not to go bananas here now. 57-55. Hickney to lead it by two with 150 to play. Look for him to go inside. Mark Eaton. Uh, what a pressure shot. What a pressure shot. 57-57. What's the turn? Uh oh Jay Hagel down for Pinckneyville. We're even Steven with 133 to go in the ballgame. Reach in foul on Gary Tidwell. May not be that bad if he doesn't like it. Hagel goes to the line where on the ball game, Shea is uh, four out of six. Tied at 57, 131. That's a good look at Shea Hagel. What a battle for the state championship. Class A basketball in Illinois. Deep breath by Hagel. Mr. Cool just popped it. 58-57. 13,000 people screaming in the assembly hall. And these high school kids go up there and fire through. And everybody's coaching the game, too, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Second one won't go. Take me, though, one-point lead. Pena has the ball. 127 to go. Keep the clock inset for you. Here's Heaton. Heaton wheeling, dealing. To Tom Funneman. Three-pointer. Three -pointer. Oh, man, oh, man. Funneman carries the three-pointer. Pena leads it by two with 107 to go. Linder. Linder is going to be called for palming. Blake Linder palmed the ball. One minute and six seconds left. Dick Horn on his feet. Pinckneyville has to have the timeout. 60 to 50. 106 left. And let's pause for these messages. Off the heat, crowded by Eflin. Over his high line to Funneman. Under a minute. Oh, travel. There's the traveling violation on uh, Gary Tidwell. So we had uh, one on Blake Linder just prior to that inbound pass, prior to the timeout. Now one on Tidwell. Goes each way. Hey, well, he took it inside. He had the man open down there. He's looking for that bounce pass. He did a good job. He just had a travel. There's a travel by Shea Hagel. Oh, what a big break that is for Pena. With 46 seconds left. Look at the Pena crowd. It'll be inbounded by Tidwell. It's done right now. I'm talking about pressure. Into Funneman. Funneman clears off this time to Heaton. Pena with a two-point lead and the ball. 40 seconds. This place is going to erupt in less than a minute. Here's Heaton. And the foul goes to Shea Hagel. All right, that's foul number four on Shea Hagel. You talk about the pressure cooker. If somebody told you there would have been two traveling violations that quick back to back, you wouldn't believe it. 33 seconds. Mark Heaton at the line. One and one. Heaton's the son of Principal Barry Heaton, and he hit a shot to tie the game at 57 with 142 under pressure. It was a big shot, too. Barry Grasowitz oh. has the basketball. Pinkneyville going for the tie. Stolen. Oh, Kidwell steals it. Off the Doug Get it Moss. out. Get it out. And we've got uh, a foul on Grasowitz. A foul has been called on Barry Grasowitz with only 23 seconds remaining. And at the free throw line goes Doug Moss, who's missed on his only throw this evening. Moss on the season is a 69% free throw shooter. Timeout for Pinckneyville. And let's take timeout for this message on the IHSA network. The cheerleader tells it all. 60 to 58, Pena. 23 seconds left. At the line goes Doug Moss. 
someone's dreams are going to be fulfilled in just a few seconds. Right? Well, I guess. Doug Moss at the free throw line. He missed on his only previous throw. But as we told you prior to the timeout, pretty good free throw shooter, just about 70%. But this is a different situation. Here's a good look at Doug Moss. Watch Tidwell go down the lane. He missed it. Another opportunity for Pagneyville. Here's Grasowitz looking for the tie. Maybe the win. Barry Grasowitz rolls yes. out of there. Linder with the board, falls to the floor, and travels. Pena has the basketball. And just as the ball come back, Grasowitz took it and put it up there, and that one went in. Yeah, after but the third unfortunately, over. that one did not count. 14 seconds left, and Heaton is fouled by Hagel. That's going to be all for Shea. He's going to foul out of this ball game with 15 points and depart with 14 seconds left. Maybe history will repeat itself. I don't know. But in the... No, wait a minute. They well, didn't call it on Hagel. They called, I beg your pardon. They called on Grasowitz, and he has four. So Hagel's still in the ball game. Let me tell you this, Ted, real quickly. Heaton is only three of eight at the line. Okay. Okay. But in the sectional, Payne missed three or four one one down the stretch. Well, yeah, he didn't miss that one. And Heaton then got the ball off. back with 14 seconds, then made both those free throws to win the game. 61-58. Or 12 seconds it was left. Okay, we have another timeout. 61-58, Pena, 14 seconds left. Let's take timeout for this on the IHS left three-point lead to Pena. Mark Keaton is at the line. He has one more throw. He's four of nine there tonight. Now, what I've been about history, they're going to have another opportunity to do the same thing, and they did hit the first one. Well, they hit the second one, it'd be the same way. This, of course, is pivotal because a three-point shot would tie it the way it stands now. But they missed. missed. All right, three-point lead to Pena. Pinkneyville with the ball with 11 seconds. Hagel, Hagel to Lindner, back to Hagel. They bobble the ball in the corner, picked up oh. and stolen. Stolen by Moss, a foul has been called, and let's oh, see, I think no. this is on Hagel. Only five seconds left. That's on Hagel, and that is all for Hagel. He fouls out with five seconds remaining with a 15-point ball game. 61 to 58. Heaton had a chance to put the lid on this thing. The second free throw popped out of there, so he is four out of ten at the line. But now Doug Moss, who missed a pair, has missed a pair in the ball game, missed the lead into the one and one up there a moment ago. We'll go to the line, and uh, Nathan Chapman comes on for Pinkneyville. Pena, five ticks of the clock away from their first state championship. However, the lead is only three. And we're gonna have another timeout taken by Pinkneyville. Let's pause for these messages. Seconds remain. There you see the Pinkneyville cheerleaders. Their club is down three. At the line, Doug Moss. Over two at the line. One and one for Moss. His club is up three. It's up four. That probably will seal it with only five seconds left. Doug Moss about to be mobbed by his teammates. Pena, ranked ninth in one poll, 13th in the other, on the verge of winning the first state championship. With it is Lindner, with one second. It's all over. And Pena reigns as Illinois Class A state basketball champions with a 62 to 58 slap over Pinckneyville. And the celebration goes on in the assembly hall. Ed Butkovich, a tremendous ball game, a great game for both clubs, a credit to both teams. Great ball game, Art. I just said, games are not one in the newspaper, only on the playing floor. Tom Funneman had 25 points for Pena here tonight. Mark Heaton finished with 15. For Pinckneyville, 15 for Shea Hagel. Barry Grasowitz wound up with 12 in the ball game, 11 for Aaron Eplin, 10 for Blake Linder. They were the leaders. And just a classic struggle here. It sees Pino win its first state championship ever. And a great Pinckneyville ball club, number one ranked in the state, suffer a heartbreaking loss. 
but uh, was there a turning point? Pinkney I don't know. Beaten, yeah, Frank. Uh, well, Art, the biggest one of all was with 114 to go. Funneman hits a three. <laughs> That's the kind of game we had on our hands. That made it 60 to 58. Yeah. And what a flat shot it was. Oh, yeah. Great play. All right. We're set for the presentation of the championship and third place trophies. Here's Steve Adams. Carterville. Remember the board. And Mr. Fred Curtis of East High School in Belleville, who serves the IHSA as treasurer of the board. At this time, please meet the Panthers of Pinckneyville High School, who finished the 1988 season in second place with a final record of 32 wins and three losses. First, meet the superintendent of Pinckneyville High School, Mr. Walter P. Grady. Head coach, Dick Horn. Assistant coach, Gary Glenzy. Assistant coach, Wes Schote. Assistant coach, Greg Hale. And now the players, number four, Chris McGranahan. Number 11, Jimmy Bowersax. Number 12, Shea Hagel. Number 22, Barry Grasowitz. Number 24, Aaron Eplin. Number 30, Wayne Tedder. Number 31, Nate Chapman. Number 32, Blake Lindner. Number 33, Danny Harris. Number 34, Aaron Kellerman. Number 40, Kevin Bird. Number 45, Troy Rushing. And statistician, David Rowe. Presenting medallions to the squad members of the first place team will be Dr. David Turner of Porta High School in Petersburg, who serves the IHSA as president of the board, and Mr. William Mitz of Monticello High School in Monticello, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board. At this time, please meet the Panthers of Pena High School who finished the 1988 season in first place with a final record of 28 wins and three losses. Here is the principal of Pena High School, Mr. Barry Heaton. Head coach, Charles Strasberger. Assistant coach, Mike Bender. Assistant coach, Brad Byers. Assistant coach, Harry Curtis. And now the players, number 14, Mark Heaton. Number 24, Doug Moss. Number 30, Tom Funneman. Number 40, Kevin Meisig. Number 44, Dave Woolard. Number 20, Travis Sims. Number 42, Jeff Curtis. Number 50, Greg Pullman. Number 12, Gary Tidwell. Number 22, Todd Holthouse. Number 34, Jeff Meissig. And number 52, Dave Eddy. Manager, Bill Scholes. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the second place trophy will be Mr. Lauren Stevens of Winona High School in Winona, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board. Will coach Dick Korn and captains of Pinckneyville High School please step forward to receive the second place trophy. Mr. Stevens, if you please. Congratulations to Pinckneyville High School, this year's second place finisher. Presenting the first place trophy will be Mr. L.L. L. Astroff, who serves the IHSA as executive secretary. Will coach Charles Strasberger and captains of state champion Pena High School. Please step forward to receive the first place trophy. Mr. Astroff, if you please, congratulations. 
Pena High School, this year's state champion in Class A. So there you have it. The state championship belongs to the Pena Panthers with a 62 to 58 triumph over Pinckneyville in the classic state title ball game. Third place to Walter Lutheran in overtime, 71 to 62 over St. Elmo. Our thanks to Frank Bassoni, of course, and uh, Ed Betkovich, Jim Albrecht. That's the story from the Assembly Hall where Pena wins its first ever state title. Good evening. Yeah. 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 Was presented by the